We are going to start with Karen Knudsen from the Clark Fork Coalition. Karen Knudsen has worked with the Coalition in a number of roles for 26 years. The past 12, it's been as the Executive Director. She is active in local and regional conservation efforts, particularly those that foster partnerships and actions to build resilient river systems and vibrant communities in changing west. With Missoula's home base, she's outdoors as much as possible in her spare time, exploring Montana's rivers and mountains with her husband and two teenage children. Proud accomplishment? Playing a key organizing role in the removal of the Milltown Dam and the restoration of the historic Blackfoot Clark Fork Confluence. Yeah. Karen! Hi. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Nikki, for the introduction. And a big thanks to all of you for inviting us in to visit with you this evening, and also for considering the Clark Fork Coalition's campaign to clean up uh, the Smurfistone Mill site as part of your 2019 grant award. Um, we're really excited about this opportunity, and we also appreciate that the Giving Circle is interested in supporting, perhaps, clean water and healthy rivers. I also want to commend you for focusing on the environment this year. It comes at a good time. I'm sure, as a lot of you are aware, the anti-environmental regulation fervor at the national level is bringing a lot of um, pain and attacks to essential environmental programs throughout the country. Um, and what we end up seeing is, oh, actually, no, I've got a, I've got a fun fact for you. Eight, it turns out 85 environmental rules and regulations have now been either reversed by the current administration or they're on their way out the door. And so what we're seeing right now is just a lot of punching of holes into frameworks that communities rely upon to protect public health, to protect clean water, and to protect our environment. Now I'm telling you all this because there's actually a silver lining, and it has something to do with Smurfit Stone. And that silver lining is that people are getting fired up, and in a good way. They're getting fired up to work together and act locally to mend the damaged parts of our world that are in our reach. The contaminated, shuttered Smurfit Stone site is one of those damaged, damaged parts of our world. And at the Clark Fork Coalition, we feel like solutions are well within reach to clean up that site, provided the community gets involved the community ratchets up the public pressure, and the community creates this expectation of cleanup action by our environmental agencies and mill site owners. So my presentation this evening, who do I, what? <laughs> uh, yes, next slide, please. And so the presentation this evening, then, will just bring to light a couple aspects of the proposal that we submitted. I'll spend a little bit of time on the background to give you a sense of the current situation to set the context then for why the campaign response that we're proposing. I will also touch on some of the environmental benefits that success with this campaign will deliver as well as address the values that the Giving Circle holds dear. John. Current situation, let's keep running. Okay, so like most pulp and paper mills, or actually all pulp, pulp and paper mills, which are very water use intensive, <coughs> Smurfit Stone, this mill property, sits right along the river. And it turns out it's the Clark Fork River. Its industrial footprint is massive, 3,200 acres. It spans four miles of river. And it plunges almost two miles into the whole uh, floodplain of the Clark Fork River. It sits 11 miles. We're still on the map, John. It sits 11 miles downstream of Missoula and just right outside of Frenchtown. Okay, let's take a look at the operations. Uh, the mill was in operation from 1957 to 2010. So a couple of those decades predate any kind of environmental regulation whatsoever. So it spent basically 53 years creating pulp from wood chips to produce craft wire board, which is in, used in the production of cardboard. Some of that craft wire board was bleached with chlorine, which brings us to contamination. So it turns out that not only do pulp and paper mills use a lot of water, they also use a lot of chemicals, and they generate a lot of chemicals, and they release a lot of chemicals into the environment. According to an EPA database, in fact, 
um, Smurf and Stone is no exception. You can see on this list that it's got a lot of the heavy hitters in the world of toxic substances, including a few carcinogens. In addition to being intense water users, big generators of chemicals and contaminants, we also have just a staggering amount of waste associated with pulp and paper mills. Again, Smurf at no exception. In its 53-year lifespan, it produced 300 billion gallons of wastewater. Where did all that go? Every drop into the Clark Fork River. It still has 800,000 tons of slush, sludge stored on site, along with 5.3 million cubic yards of mill waste also stored on site, in unlike unregulated dumps. Um, I put the 1.6 million tons of dioxin generating pulp up there because that's how much they bleached and that gives you a sense then of how much dioxin is also in the environment as a result of these operations. Let's move on to where all that waste is sitting. It's incredibly vulnerable, which is pretty disconcerting. Between the settling ponds that are unlined and abandoned, the unlined waste dumps, the unlined sludge ponds, and the landfills, we're talking a thousand acres, even just slightly more than a thousand acres, all stored, almost all stored, in the 100-year floodplain of the Clark Fork River, meaning it's coming into contact with groundwater, the groundwater picks up the chemicals, the groundwater flows to the river, and we're contaminating the river. Tests have actually shown that sediments are contaminated, and we've also learned that fish tissue is showing elevated levels of dioxins, furans, PCBs, and selenium. So we've got some problems on that front, too. The other issue here is the only thing separating this dynamic river system from all this waste is a couple flimsy berms. We're talking, I mean, these are just gravel berms that got bulldozed. They're not, meant, they're not engineered to be flood control structures, and right now they're unmaintained. They're old, they're deteriorating. To us, this looks like an accident waiting to happen, because as you'll see also, the river wants to push this way. On this side of the bank, that's a mountain. So the river can't go there to release its flood energy. It's got to move this direction. Then we happen to know that these little critters are having a heyday out there right now. We've done a few reconnaissance missions. Holes everywhere, tunnels everywhere. This just looks like an accident waiting to happen. So what has EPA's response been? In our humble opinion, completely subpar. The Smurf and Stone site has been closed for nearly 10 years. EPA has been involved for nearly that amount of time as well. And at this point, we haven't seen a lot of action. We've seen a lot of dithering, a lot of dawdling. It's also become apparent to us that EPA really, they operate um, with a lack of transparency, lack of communication, lack of scientific integrity. They tend to skimp on sampling. They minimize risks. They misinterpret data. To top it all off, we've also got the responsible parties, international paper, West Rock and M2 Green that seem to have this awfully heavy influence on the process, a really heavy foot on the brake, it seems to us. As a result, the Superfund process is, is proceeding at a glacial pace. In fact, here's what the uh, Smurfit Stone site project manager told us in August of 2019. I am not kidding. She said, We're in the third year of the second step of an eight-based Superfund process. <laughs> I did a little back of the napkin calculation and came up with, oh my gosh, at this rate it's going to be 20 to 30 years before we even get to clean up, <coughs> if it happens at all. So one of the Clark Fork Coalition's technical advisors, Peter Nielsen, has, oh my gosh, I got to really accelerate. Peter Nielsen has likened the Superfund process to a refrigerator that shows up in your living room. I mean, it's great to have a refrigerator in your home, but not a living room. And so what do you have to do? You have to push, push harder and push relentlessly to get it in the right place to go to work for your cause. So that brings us to the campaign response. So our goal for the campaign is to compel EPA and responsible parties to stop stalling and get going to take action to clean up the Smurf and Stone site, remove the berms, and restore the river. Our proposal Next slide, please, John. Our proposal actually outlined about seven activities. The reason there are three right here is because the budget in our proposal also earmarked funds from a potential giving circle contribution to hire a part-time campaign organizer 
and give that person some resources, some community or some communications and media uh, training as well as resources. So this person would then focus on these three activities, firing up the public, getting corporate brass involved, building community around the vision of a cleaned up and restored landscape. As far as the firing up goes, we know this works. Why? Because we've done it before. We did it for the Milltown Dam Removal Campaign in which we began a, a sassy public education and outreach program or a sassy uh, media program and it worked. We got that dam out of there thanks to the, the fired up community. We've never actually done this. We've never tried to engage the corporate giants. But why not? I mean, good heavens. They all talk about the triple bottom line, people, planet, performance. Let's give them the opportunity to be proactive partners, invest in solutions rather than obstruction. Both of them made practically two billion bucks net in 2018. Finally, the vision, we know what point A is. It's this, this complete wasteland, this, this hulking hazardous wasteland. What is point B? What are we trying to get to? Don't know yet. The Clark Fork Coalition actually has lots of ideas, but this needs to be a community process, so we need to spark community conversation among those who will be living in, learning from, using, and interacting with that restored landscape over the long haul. Real quick, because I know Nikki's getting antsy. <laughs> <laughs> Benefits, values, oh my goodness. If we succeed at Smurfit, this is hitting the jackpot in terms of environmental um, benefits. I'm not going to go into all of them, but note the top one, disaster prevention. You saw those photos. This is just a ticking time bomb. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when that berm breaks and we've got the river flooding out all those contaminants. Let's talk about values. The Giving Circle's values of community, opportunity, and equity are actually ones that the Clark Fork Coalition holds dear as well. I put a couple bullets up there on how our campaign specifically relates to those, but I want to just quickly share the Coalition's worldview with you because it also embraces those values. That the Coalition, we really believe that the protection of fresh water resources should be central to everything that we do as a human society. Why is that? Because water is the basis of all life. It's our foundation. And so when people come together to care for, to protect, and to restore the rivers that carry that essential resource, we really are. We bring people together. We are healing fissures and injustices, and we're working towards the best possible future for the river and for the people, fish, and wildlife it sustains. Final slide. <laughs> Back to our fridge. Leaving with you with a closing thought. Dramatic change is an accumulation of acts. That's what needs to happen at Smurfit Stone. For 10 years, we've been dutifully playing this EPA process game. You know what? It's not working. So it's time to just start accumulating some acts. It's time to start pushing, pushing hard, pushing relentlessly to get to a better future. Thank you for your